Hello folks, this is Dr. Young, and in this video we're going to actually take a closer look at the NMR spectrum itself. We're going to look at the number of signals, which is the easiest thing to uh, analyze and kind of talk about what that means with regards to our actual organic structure. So if you recall from that intro video, the number of signals is literally just looking at how many signals, how many groupings of these lines are there in each NMR spectrum, right? So I have two in this case, I have one on top, one on bottom. And the idea here is if I look at the one on top, I see one, two, three. I see three signals. If I look at the one on the bottom, I see one, two, three, four, five signals. And that alone, just that observation of three versus five, is enough to help me start to distinguish between which molecules might possibly um, uh, uh, lead to these spectra and which might not. Right? It gives me some information, but it's super easy to figure out. All you have to do is count, and you just have to relate the number of sig signals to the actual number of hydrogens and what their chemical environment is. So let's talk about this chemical environment. Why might a molecule give three signals versus five signals? So what we're going to see, right, is that the number of signals, right, three versus five, like in that first example, the number of signals equals the number of hydrogen environments. And by the number of hydrogen environments, what we mean here is remember, we're talking about different different types of indistinguishable indistinguishable uh, protons. Since we're talking about proton in the mar here, if this was a different nucleus like carbon, we would be talking about indis uh, uh, indistinguishable carbons. So that means I cannot tell the difference. I cannot tell the difference. So it's not that's not large categories like um, CH3s versus CHs. We're talking about that this CH3 is different than that CH3. Can you tell any difference? Can you verbally talk to somebody and be like, leading me to the hydrogen group that you're talking about? So, for example, if I look at this molecule right here, this is just good old ethanol. I drew out all the three-dimensional structure to help us kind of visualize this. I see one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens on here. And now what I'm claiming here is that all of these hydrogens, these six hydrogens, they are not all in the same environment. I can see different types of hydrogens. I can distinguish for you different hydrogens on this molecule, right? Like if I just take my little, my little arrow off here and I say point to the hydrogen on the oxygen, no one's going to be confused. Everyone's going to be like, oh, that one, right? That hydrogen is in its own environment. That hydrogen is that hydrogen. No one would confuse it for one of the other two because I said the hydrogen on the oxygen. Similarly, if I said, hey, point to a hydrogen that is in a methyl group, in a CH3 group, um, you would, now, now it's a little bit different because now you say, like, well, I don't know, is he talking about this one or is he talking about this one or is he talking about this one, right? Here's a CH3 group. This is a CH3 group. But you don't know now if I'm talking about this one or that one or that one because there is no difference between these three, right? Please keep in mind that when we're talking about conformational analysis and everything, right, all of these single bonds are spinning freely and very quickly at normal temperatures, right? So those are spinning and spinning and spinning. So if I spun this around, right, let's just say hypothetically I was talking about mm, this hydrogen. Right, let me do this in a different color. Let's say hypothetically I was talking about this hydrogen, and I spun that around, right? I took, put it behind my back. I spun it around. I show you this molecule again you'd have no idea which hydrogen that is now, right? You don't know if I spun it a little bit and now it's here, or if I spun it a little bit more and now it's here, or if I spun it all the way and it's back to where it was. You wouldn't know in which position my purple hydrogen is now. You, you can't tell. There's no way to distinguish between those hydrogens. So I'd say that all three of these hydrogens are indistinguishable from one, one another. So they're all in the same environment. That env that's all the same environment. Those CH3s, those are all in the same environment. I cannot tell the difference between those three. But I do know that those three are different than these two, right? Because I can say, oh, again, you know, again, I can say, well, point to a hydrogen that's in a CH2. And for this molecule, there's only one CH2, it's this. And so if I said point to a hydrogen in this environment, you'd point to either the one on the left or the one on the right, right? You wouldn't point to the one on the, a, on the O. You wouldn't point to one of the H's on the CH3. These are unique and they're different. Right? The, the hydrogens in the CH2 are different than the hydrogens in the methyl. The hydrogens in the CH2 are different than the hydrogen on the OH. These are one, two, three different environments. 
And so we're going to start to use this concept of different environments to inform how many different signals we get. Because again, every unique environment has a unique signal. We're going to kind of cluster these hydrogens together by their environment. Another way to put this is, um, again, if I said, OK, I've got this molecule here. Uh, I'm going to give you $100 if you can find that H. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that H. Oops. I don't know why that went away. Sorry. Here's the H. I'm going to take that hydrogen. I'm going to put it behind my back. Or I'm going to take this molecule and put it behind my back. I'll give you a million dollars if you can figure out which hydrogen it is now. And then I present you this molecule. What are your chances of picking the right hydrogen? Your chances of picking the right hydrogen should be pretty darn good, right? You should have a 50-50 chance of picking the right hydrogen. Because you know that the hydrogen that I pointed to is not the one on the O. You know that it's not the one on the CH3. You know it's one of the two hydrogens on this CH2, right? Or in other words, you know that it's one of the ones in this environment. And here it is on the molecule all flipped around. So you don't know, right, is it this one or is it this one? Because again, these hydrogens are indistinguishable. You cannot tell the difference between those two hydrogens. They are the same. They're indistinguishable. You can't tell the difference between them. So if I did this little trick with you, I'll give you a million dollars. If you can pick it, you'd have a 50-50 chance of deciding or, or picking the right hydrogen, right? You have a 50-50 chance because you can't tell the difference. All this to say is these molecules have three environments, right? This is three environments for ethanol. Or if I draw ethanol out in its line bond drawing, right, we'd say it has one, two, three environments. And again, three environments means that in the when we take an NMR of it, it should have three signals. We should, we should expect to see three signals. So let's take a look at these molecules, right, and decide how many environments are there, or in other words, how many signals would we expect to see if we took an NMR of any one of these. So if I look at the top left one, right, I've got this ketone here. I see that, um, and I'll just draw these H's out on the first couple just to kind of emphasize the H's that we're talking about here. Let me draw these a little bit nicer. So if I draw the H's out on this first one, the question is, how many different hydrogen environments are there? Or in other words, how many different types of hydrogens, how many unique groups of hydrogens are there? Right off the bat, I see that one cluster is just a CH2. That's definitely its own chemical signal. There's no other CH2s on this molecule, only one CH2. So I know that those hydrogens are the same as each other, but those hydrogens in the CH2, definitely different than the methyls on the left and definitely different than the methyls on the right, right? Because those are, other ones are methyls, not CH2s. Now, the question is, are these methyls the same as one another, right? Like, can I distinguish between one of the hydrogens in the left-hand side with one of the hydrogens on the right-hand side? And remember that these molecules, right, are all randomly oriented in, a, in, in space, so it's not like you can say left versus right. We have to say, is it near this or is it near that? In this one, I would say that they are different from one another, right? Because if I said point to a hydrogen that's on the methyl that is attached to a ketone, that should lead you to the one on the right-hand side. Because the methyls um, over here, they're not attached to a ketone, they're attached to a CH2. If I had wanted you to look at the uh, hydrogens on the left-hand side, that methyl, I'd say look to the methyl that's attached to the CH2. That would describe the ones on the left, but it doesn't describe the ones on the right because the ones on the right are, are attached to a carbonyl, are attached to a ketone. So that means that these are different environments, right? This CH3 is different than this CH3 because I can describe it differently in the molecule. It has a different environment, different things around it. One is next to a carbonyl, directly next to a carbonyl. One is not. So this would have three signals, right? Three different groups, which leads to three signals. Now, if I look at the molecule right next to it here, again, I'll draw this out. There's a carbon here with an H and an H. Here we have two more hydrogens, and here we have three more hydrogens. Same deal. Um, I only see one CH3, so that must be its own group. I only And then I see a CH2. <clears throat> I see two CH2s. I see a CH2 on the left attached to the alkene, and I see a CH2 on the right that is not attached to the alkene. Right off the bat, even in the way I described it right, one is on an alkene, it's sp2 hybridized carbon. One's uh, not on an alkene, it's an sp3 hybridized carbon. 
So those are different, right? I could point you to which one I wanted you to look at. I could say, oh, the CH2 that's on the sp3 carbon, and you'd be like, oh, those, not that. So I could point to those and be like, well, hey, look, here's a unique set of hydrogens. Here's another group. And then if I go over and look at the ones on the alkene, what's interesting about this, right, keep in mind that the reason why all three of these hydrogens over here in blue are equivalent is because that freely rotates and they all take the place of one another. Same thing here, right? That's the single bond that freely rotates. All of them take the place of one another, right? They're spinning and spinning and spinning so fast, we can't tell the difference between them. Now, we have an alkene here, and remember the alkenes don't rotate. They can't spin. That means that these H's are not taking each other's place, right? They're not spinning around taking each other's place. That means that one hydrogen is, is cis, one hydrogen is on the same side as the uh, chlorine, and one hydrogen is trans to the chlorine, or cis to the ethyl. And those don't change places. And so now I can actually distinguish for you the difference between those hydrogens. I can say, point to the hydrogen on alkene that's, on, that's cis to the uh, chlorine, and you should point there. Or I could say, point to the hydrogen that is trans to the chlorine, and you would point there. So that means that these are in fact in separate environments themselves. So in this case, we have four groups, four environments, which means we have four signals. If you took an NMR of this molecule, you should see four signals. Now, I'm not going to do as much depth. You could take a moment to pause, try these other four. How many environments would we see? How many signals would we see for these four? So go ahead and take a minute, pause, and then I'll review these with you in just a sec. So let's take a look at this one here, right? <clears throat> the one on the right is the first example of something that's symmetric, which is going to kind of mess us up a little bit, but we want to pay attention to it. I wanted to show you this example. Because if I take a look at this CH3 over here on the left-hand side, I do see another CH3. It's this one over here. Can I describe these CH3s as being different in any way? No, I can't, right? I could say the CH3 that's attached to a CH2 that's then attached to a carbon with an OH. Same thing over here, CH3 attached to a CH2, attached to a carbon with an OH. There is no difference between these two legs here. There's no difference between these two sides, right? We'd say, for example, this is not a chiral carbon because it doesn't have four unique groups. These groups are not unique. So what we'd say is that, well, you know what? This CH3 is the same environment as that CH3. And these CH2s are in fact the same environment as those CH2s. And this CH, there's no other CH like that. And this OH, there is no uh, other hydrogen on an oxygen. So this would also have four signals, four environments, right? Even though it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six things I could circle because of the symmetry there, there's no difference between those left legs and right legs. They're indistinguishable from one another. They're in the same chemical environment. They feel all the same uh, chemical stresses of the things that are attached to them, whether they're you know electronegative or not. If I go down to the bottom left-hand one, similar story, I can't tell the difference, difference between these two methyls. Again, there is no up, down, left, right. It's all about what is attached to what. What is on the same side as this versus that. So there is no, meth there is no difference between those two methyls. If I rotate this bond right here, no way could you tell that I had done that. Right? You, there's no way you could tell. They're indistinguishable from one another. No other CHs. Um, there's no other CH2s. There, there, or, sorry, that CH2 is different than that CH2, right? I can talk about the one that is attached to a CH2 and a CH. And then the one I circled in red is attached to a methyl and a CH2, right? Those are different. I'll do this in black. So now this one would have one, two, three, four, five, five signals. Five different environment, five signals. Here's an Audi. Um, there is no difference between any of these. Right? They're all the same. There's no difference between those. Right? You cannot describe, if I said point to an H on a CH2, that's all of them. Right? They're, they're, this would only give you one signal in NMR spectroscopy. You'd only have one signal here. So you could get that. Right? There's a lot of symmetry. There is no difference. Right? Remember, environments are uh, indistinguishable. Right? The hydrogens in the same environment are indistinguishable from another, whereas hydrogens in different environments are distinguishable, are distinguishable from one another. And then lastly for this one, um, that methyl is different than the CH there, which is different than the CH there, which is different than the CH there, which is different than the CH there, right? These are all unique. Um, I can say, I can talk about this purple one if I want to say, 
O, right? The CH on the benzene ring that is uh, two away from the bromine and two away from the methyl. I could say this green one, right? The CH that is next to where the methyl is attached and then what next to where there's just a CH. This is the one, the CH that's between the bromine and the methyl, right? I can talk about all these differently and I could point you to any of those if I wanted, just verbally. So this would also have one, one two, three, four, five signals, right, in an NMR. So that's what we're kind of looking at, right? That's what these hydrogen environments are. So now if I look at a spectrum, right? So here, here's a simple spectrum I showed you earlier, which could be the correct structure for the spectrum. Right now, all we know is what's going on with signals, right? So all I know right now is that there's one, two, three signals, which we said means that there should be three uh, hydrogen environments. So if I look down at these four molecules that I'm saying, hey, it could be one of these four, which could it be? If I look at these four molecules, for this first one, I see a methyl here that's not like any other methyls, and a CH2, that there are no other CH2, and this methyl is different than the other methyls. So I see three environments, hydrogen environments here. If I look at the one to the right of it, I see a CH3 that is different than all the others, right? That's different than this CH3. This CH2 is different than that CH2, and that CH stands alone. I look at the um, cyclohexanone thing. There's no hydrogens up there. But the CH2 right here is exactly the same as the CH2 over there because of that, of that symmetry. I can't tell the difference between that CH2 and that CH2. I'd just be like, oh, a hydrogen and a CH2 next to the ketone. That describes both sides. That describes four hydrogens. Same thing here. These are identical, and then these are different. And then lastly, for this one, I have that methyl is different than that methyl, and there's a CH2, no hydrogens there. So if I look at these, right, this has three environments. This has one, two, three, four, five environments. This has three environments, and this has three environments. So if I look at these, right, according to my NMR, which has one, two, three environments, I know that it cannot be this one. This one has too many environments. It would give me five signals, not three signals. So this NMR uh, could correspond to any one of these three. It could correspond to the first one, the third one, or the last one, because they all have three environments and would give three signals. So now how do we tell which one of those then, right? One of these, one of these is right, by the way. Um, how do I tell of these which ones this corresponds to? And in order to answer that question, we need to take a, a deeper look. We need to look at now the integrals, the splitting patterns, and the chemical shifts. So those will be in the following videos. So keep it up. Watch the next video. Good luck.